Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World. Today, we're going to start trying to track down some weird hesitation issues that we've been feeling with our usually trusty NSX back here. Now, I know what you're thinking if you've been following the channel for any amount of time. Please, no more hesitation issues. Um, <laughs> we've dealt with that enough. Uh, but don't worry, I have suspicions that uh, we know what's going on here and the fix will hopefully be straightforward if not easy but the first thing we need to do is go for a drive and run an experiment to see if we can confirm our hypothesis here so we are now about 10 minutes out from lab of the world hq and the car is up to temperature we've got uh, coolant temp at 171 and oil temp at 182 f uh, oil pressure at 2500 RPM, around 75 PSI, and uh, we have enough gas. Very little, but there's a reason for that that we'll get to. What I wanted to do now is show you what I'm talking about, though. So we're going to slow down here so I can actually do this within the speed limit. Um, but at 3000 RPM, we're going to hit it, and then listen for two different uh, RPM ramps as if VTEC is kicking in twice. Here we go. could see or maybe hear better um, at 4,000 rpm we got the engine started accelerating quicker and then again at 6,000 rpm now the 6,000 rpm ramp uh, we're expecting <laughs> that's VTEC kicking in the 4,000 rpm ramp that is something different I think um, I've done a little research so let's do that one more time just to confirm what we're seeing and then we'll pull over and take a closer look at a couple of things. So we've stopped here out of the way to uh, try a little experiment in, uh, in the interest of troubleshooting. So we're going to walk around here to the right side of the car and the engine bay and we're looking for this guy. This is the fuel pump resistor. Now what this does essentially is it allows the fuel pump to run at a lower duty cycle when it's uh, when basically you don't need all the flow, which would be at lower RPMs. And having dug through the service manual, the cutoff for that is perhaps coincidentally around 4,000 RPM, I think 4,200. What we can do though is uh, run a quick experiment here. So give me just a second, I'm going to unplug it. I need to undo a clip in the back to take it off its mount, and then I can unplug it like so. I'm just gonna tuck that wire out of the way. Tuck this wire out of the way. And then we're gonna take this wire, or this, this clip rather, and then we're gonna take a jumper wire, and I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna set you down while I do that because I need both hands. Okay, so we can see this is it, it's a, a larger length of wire than is necessary, but we just have these two pins jumpered, so it's going to bypass what this resistor would normally do. And it will give us uh, full fuel pump pressure all the time. Now we can go and see if this is going to solve our problem. Okay, so with our resistor bypassed, let's run the same experiment again and see what happens. And then... felt less hesitant to start with from my butt dyno perspective but you may have been able to see in here as well that we only had the one rpm ramp at 6000 rpm so let's uh here we, we will repeat for uh for scientific purposes here repeat for science down to 2500 or so actually we'll go lower this time it's going to bog, it was going to bog here, so let's go. So 2,000 RPM, give or take, and 100% throttle. And that was a clean pull all the way from 2 to 6.5 or 7 or wherever we shifted there. Let's see the side-by-side -side replay with and without the resistor, starting from 2,000 RPM.
but dyno and audible clues aside, the TAC doesn't lie, giving a 500 RPM advantage to the bypassed resistor setup. So, what that tells me is that we either have an issue with the fuel pump resistor or we have an issue with the fuel pump itself. So where does that leave us for next steps from here? Well, first things first, we're gonna go back to the studio and order at least one part, the fuel pump resistor. We will probably, if I'm honest, order the fuel pump as well because it's original to the car. It will go wrong at some point. So I feel like it would be better to have one on hand for that inevitability, even if it's not the immediate issue. In the meantime, if parts are going to take a long time to arrive or are for some reason unavailable or difficult to find, I will just fashion a, a slightly tidier way to bypass the fuel pump resistor. So here we are a few days and a few dollars later having now procured a new fuel pump resistor, among other things. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna take the old one off the car, then we're gonna compare these guys on the bench, just do a kind of a simple resistance check. Then we will put the new one on the car, go for another drive and see if it fixed anything. So we now have the old resistor off the car and we have our new resistor that we're gonna pull out of its box here. And then we will uh, we'll compare the internal resistance of these two just to see if there's any, uh, see what the difference might be. The spec for these NSX resistors should be between 0.5 and 0.7 ohms. We'll turn our multimeter on here and check the old guy first. What have we got here? All right, apologies for the beeping. I don't know how to turn that off, but uh, let's check the new guy here. So we had 0.7 out of that, which is, should be in, in spec. The new one, 0.6 or 0.7. So both of the resistors look like, at least cold, are approximately the same actual resistance. Now, resistance in a lot of materials will increase as the temperature increases, but at least cold on the table here, both of these appear in spec. So with that said, we're gonna swap this bracket over to the new resistor and then stick it on the car, go for a drive, and we'll see what happens. With the resistor and bracket moved, we took the opportunity to clean the bracket up just a little bit, but now it's time to mount the new resistor to the bracket. Uh, it's held on by two screws. Getting these off can be a pain. Uh, we successfully removed one from the old bracket. Uh, the second one, however, uh, not quite so much. Uh, I, did have, I found a replacement in my uh, bag of spares but just expect a fight there or uh, the need to bust out a drill in the worst case. All right, so you join me approaching the same stretch of road that we tested on last time. Roughly the same ambient conditions and the car is similarly warmed up. Actually a little bit more warmed up than last time because this is my second lap. Um, I'll include some footage from the first lap through, which was inconclusive, which is, I mean, we hope that's promising, but it wasn't obviously bad. But I want to test again just to be sure, that, you know, if we're suggesting that the old one died some kind of thermal death, then I want to make sure this one is definitely up to temperature. Uh, we're back at 2500 RPM. Let's see what happens. Again, hard to tell. I think something is happening there between like four and 5,000 RPM, but I don't know what. 4,200 RPM should be our kind of like target for stuff. Let me get slowed back down here in second gear so again I can do this within the speed limit. We'll try it again. All right, so there we go. There's probably still a little bit of a ramp happening, if I'm honest. It's less than, uh, definitely less pronounced than it was before, which is odd. But uh, that's, that's gonna be, yeah, that's a little bit difficult to say. Back in the garage now with the car cooling off behind us, we are left with two real possibilities uh, in light of our testing. And the first one, probably the most likely scenario is that the aging fuel pump is in fact starting to give up the ghost. 
uh, with the new and hopefully known good resistor in place, still demonstrating the same symptoms, meaning that at lower uh, at the lower voltage, it's not able to deliver the pressure that it should at those lower RPM ranges. The second possibility is that we are just asking too much of the fuel system in its factory configuration with our newly acquired additional displacement. That seems unlikely given that there were no symptoms for the first uh, six months of that, uh, of having an extra 0.2 liters, but, uh, <laughs> But there is a possibility, and you know, all of the uh, um, uh, many the people that run any kind of forced induction on the NSX that still use a stock pump, they'll bypass that resistor just as a matter of course to make sure they're getting all the fuel delivery that they need for uh, running that kind of boost. That probably shouldn't be the case for a, such an incremental, uh, normally aspirated bump, but we are running an adjustable pressure regulator. There are some other variables now in the system uh, that weren't there previously. Uh, however, again, there weren't any symptoms for six months. This is definitely like a recent phenomenon. So that seems less likely. But if that is the case, if we find out if we do swap the pump and it's still doing the same thing um, with a resistor in line, then we'll just bypass the resistor. If the original pump lasted 30 years and 300,000 miles, even if it halves that expected lifespan, I think that's probably still an acceptable attrition rate uh, just to make sure that things are running as they should in the meantime. So, uh, adventures you can then look forward to on the channel in the future. <laughs> as I'm uh, fortunately arriving back from doing these test drives with like less than an eighth of a tank of gas. We're, we're on E. Probably do a little bit more driving uh, before I uh, proceed with probably dropping the tank. Uh, and the, the question will be if I'm doing that before or after the uh, upcoming drive we have planned, NS Expedition. Um, speaking of which, on July 20th, we should have a registration link up and uh, available in the uh, video description by the time you watch this. But if you own an NSX and you're in the southeastern region uh, and or you would like to travel down to participate, uh, you are welcome to do so. July 20th, uh, a bunch of NSXs are running around the foothills of the Smokies. It's a good time. We try and keep you out of the humidity as much as we can. Uh, most people have enjoyed it. <laughs> and then we're going to hit up the, uh, uh, so that's, that's on a Saturday, doing all the driving and some uh, stopping for lunch up in the mountains and stuff like that. And then on the Sunday, we will uh, all uh, crash the uh, local Knoxville Har Harper's Cars and Coffee uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, roll in deep with a good NSX representation. So things you can look forward to on the channel. But until that time, uh, I guess I'm going to uh, start taking things apart here. <laughs> <laughs> for my next video. Uh, and until that happens, though, again, thanks for watching. I'm Richard. This is Lap the World. We'll see you guys all in the next video, if not out of the track.